Anyway, everything you need to know about the Max. At the beginning, we're gonna talk about basics, but in the middle and at the end, there will be some advanced tricks, so I would recommend to anyone to watch this video. Okay, let's go. Max is an abbreviation for minimum excluded, so the max of a set is a minimum non-negative integer that isn't present in this set. For example, the max of a set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is equal to 0, because there are no zeros in it. The max of a set 0, 1, 2, 5, 10 is equal to 3, and the max of an empty set is equal to 0. Although the max is initially defined for a set, it can be similarly defined for a multiset, that's if the elements of a set can be repeated, or an array for example. It doesn't really matter. Let's learn how to find the max of a given array efficiently. First of all, let's notice that if there are n elements in a set, then its max is at most n. Because if the max of a set is equal to k, then the set must contain numbers 0, 1, 2, etc, etc, k minus 1. So the size of this set isn't less than k. And if the size of this set is equal to n, then the max is at most n. This fact will definitely help us. For example, it means that all elements of our set that are greater than n can be just ignored, because they don't affect the max. Now let's perform the counting sort. Let's create an additional array of size n plus 1 with positions from 0 to n. Then we'll go through the original array and for all its elements that are not greater than n, we will mark in the additional array that the corresponding number is in the set. After that, we just need to iterate through the positions of the additional array in ascending order and find the first number that we didn't mark. It will be our max. The time complexity of this solution is of course of n. Now let's learn how to keep track of the max of a changing set. Let us have a multiset that is initially empty. And there are three types of queries. Add an element to our multiset delete an element from our multiset and find the max of our multiset. We're gonna handle all these queries in all for again time where n is the total number of queries. Let's make an std map where for each element we will store its number of occurrences in the multiset. Since the max at any moment is less than n, we can use an array instead of a map. But it doesn't really matter because our time complexity is logarithmic anyway. In addition, let's store the complement of our multiset. It means the set of all numbers from 0 to n that are not present in our multiset. We're gonna store this complement in std set. Initially, the complement set consists of all the numbers from 0 to n because our multiset is empty. Then, if an element is added to the multiset, we need to add 1 to its value in the map and remove it from the complement set if it's still there. Let's perform some queries. And if at some point an element is removed from our multiset, then we need to subtract 1 from its value in the map. And also if after that its value becomes 0, it means that this element has completely disappeared from our multiset, so it must be added back to the complement set. And if we need to find the max of our multiset, we can just simply take the smallest element in the complement set, and it's gonna be the answer. This algorithm's time complexity is of n log n if the number of queries is n. This method can also be used even if we don't know in advance how many queries we're gonna have. In this case, we can't add all the elements from 0 to n to the complement set before all the queries because we just simply don't know n. But this isn't a problem. Let's initially add only 0 to the complement set and also maintain the number k, which means the number of queries that have been already made to our structure. Then at any moment we will keep track of all the numbers from 0 to k. And since k requests were made, the max should definitely be among the numbers from 0 to k. When we get a new query, we execute it and then increase k by 1 since the number of requests has also increased by 1. Now we need to keep track of another new element, k plus 1. 
Let's look at our map and see whether this number is present in our multiset or not. And if it's absent, then we'll add it to the complement set. And if we made n queries, then at the end, k is equal to n. So the final time complexity remains of n log n. If the elements of our set are only being added and not being removed, then task becomes even easier. It can be now solved in constant time per query. Let's make an array or an ordered map in which for every element we will store whether it's in the set or not. And also additionally we will support the variable k which will be equal to the max. Then initially k is zero and if at some point we added number k to the set then we need to increase the number k by one as long as it's in our set. So k will always increase and for n queries it will increase at most n times. The time complexity is linear. If queries are more complex than just adding an element to our set and deleting an element from our set, you may want to maintain a segment tree instead of std set. For example, if an entire segment of elements can be added to the set at once. Let's assume that in the segment tree ai is equal to 1 if the element is in the set and ai is equal to zero if the element is not in the set. Then we just need to be able to find the leftmost zero. We'll store sums of subtrees, then the subtree is complete if the sum of the elements in it is equal to the length of the corresponding segment. And then we can just go down the tree to find max. If you don't know what a segment tree is, there will be some articles in the description. It's also sometimes helpful to store numbers in a tree. Try tree tr tree 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 tree. <clears throat> anyway, it's also sometimes helpful to store numbers in a binary try of the bits. You can see that in a sense, a try and a segment tree are kind of the same thing in this case. However, in a try, we can change the structure of a tree. For example, perform XOR with some number to the entire set and still store sums of the subtrees. But in fact, it's probably not worth it to actually perform XOR to the try. Let's store separately what number should be XORed with all the elements in the set. If we need to perform XOR with the number X and then with the number Y, we can just perform XOR with X XOR Y. If we add the number a to the set and the set is already XORed with the number x, then we'll instead add the number a XOR x to the set. And then to find max, we need to go down the try, but sometimes our children are swapped. If the number x has beat one on the position corresponding to the current level, then the left son is the right son and the right one is the left one. In fact, all the same stuff can be maintained with a simple segment tree. But sometimes the try is still a more convenient way of performing some operations, although it's pretty much the same thing. The next fact, in my opinion, is the most useful, but pretty much no one knows about it. If you didn't know, Max has nothing to do with Mexico City International Airport and this Deep Tax Max guacamole sauce, perfect with chips by the way, which I always see when I go grocery shopping. There will be a problem on this trick in the contest, so you can practice it. Okay, let's go on. There is also such a topic as games on cyclic graphs. If you don't know it, then it's worth studying. I will leave a link to the article in the description. In this theory, we say that every game on an acyclic graph is equivalent to a nim with some number of stones, which is called nimber. Then the nimber of any vertex can be calculated as the max of the nimbers of all its children. This is probably the most natural place where the max operation pops up. But of course that's not what I wanted to tell you about. I want to tell you about the following. Let's say that we have a game on an acyclic graph with n vertices and m edges. Then what are the maximum nimbers in it? 
You can probably guess that they will be not bigger than n minus 1, because any number is max of no more than n minus 1 numbers, those numbers that are in the children of the current vertex. But this is not the best estimate. In fact, all the numbers in the game on the graph will be no more than square root of 2m. Why is it true? First of all, note that if the number of a vertex is a, then this vertex has a degree of at least a because a is the max of the numbers of its children, so there must be numbers 0, 1, 2, etc, etc, a minus 1 among the children. So there are at least a children. Second of all, let there be a vertex v with a number k. Then, as we've already understood, it has children 0, 1, 2, etc, etc, k minus 1. But these vertices then have degrees of at least 0, 1, 2, etc, etc, k minus 1. And also there is our vertex v itself with a degree of at least k. So the number of edges in the graph isn't less than 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus etc, etc plus k, which is k multiplied by k plus 1 divided by 2, which is bigger than k squared divided by 2. If we move the 2 to the other side and take the square root of the inequality, we'll get that if there is a vertex with a number k, then k isn't bigger than square root of 2m, which is exactly what we needed to prove. This idea can also be applied in the general case outside the graphs. If there is a set with the sum of elements c, then the max of the set isn't greater than square root of 2c. Now let's move on to more advanced tricks. Let's learn how to search for max on a segment of an array. Unfortunately, many people think that this can be done only in n square roots of n, because this problem is often given as an exercise on the MOS algorithm. But in fact, we can answer these queries in O of n plus q log n time using scanline plus segment tree. If you don't know these topics, then this part will probably be incomprehensible to you, but with the right amount of enthusiasm you can learn them from the articles in the description. So, first of all, as usual, note that if the length of the array is n, then the max of any subsegment isn't bigger than n, so we only need to track the numbers from 0 to n. Let's make a new array of length n plus 1, in which for each element we'll store the last position in the original array where that number occurs. Initially, all the positions are minus 1s. On this new array, we will build a segment tree on minimum. Then, we'll go through the original array with a scan line, adding elements one by one. When we get to the position i, we can answer all the queries whose right boundary is i. If the left boundary of the query is l, then we just need to find the smallest number whose last occurrence in our initial array is less than l. This will mean that this number doesn't occur in the segment. This can be found simply by going down the tree and choosing which branch to go every time. After we've answered all the queries for position i, we need to update that the number ai occurs at the position i and move on. Obviously, this will work in O of n plus q again. Note that this solution is offline because we need to know all the queries in advance. However, as with any other scanline segment tree solution, we can make it online. To do this, we just need to use a persistent segment tree. However, if we have change queries in the array, then as far as I know, the segment tree can no longer help us. If I'm wrong, write it in the comments. If there are changes, then I can only solve this problem with a three-dimensional MOS algorithm. And the time complexity is of n to the power of 5 thirds. It's the same as the usual MOS algorithm, but in addition to the left and right boundaries, we also have the time variable. And now the block size isn't the square root of n, but n to the power of 2 thirds. And for the two variables that are inside their blocks, we consistently move the remaining one forward. You can read more about this algorithm in the analysis of one of the contest tasks. The link will be in the description. That's it for today, but I'm pretty sure I missed something, so I invite you to share your tricks, tips and ideas about what else everyone needs to know about the max in the comments. And in the description, as always, there will be a link to the contest in which you can solve problems on this topic.
In the nearest future, I'm gonna translate my other videos to English, so subscribe to this channel if you don't wanna miss them. But for now, you can check out my Russian channel. There are English subtitles, so you may try to understand what's going on. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye. Tree. 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 Tree.